Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank our friends at Premium Bar Products for sponsoring this episode. If you're ready to step up your game at your home bar, check out premiumbarproducts.com to choose from their wide selection of glassware, all of which can be custom engraved with your personal message or logo. And there's no minimum order. So after the episode, head over to premiumbarproducts.com and check out everything they have to offer. Now, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. And I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is The Bourbon Road. And we have another Craft Distillery Monday, Mike. Heck yeah, we do, man. What do we got? Well, you brought Blom Brothers Distilling Company's straight rye whiskey for me to drink. Yeah. That's and you heard of had you heard of Blom Brothers before? I had. They had that Not Our Bourbon. Called it the Notter Bourbon. Yeah, and it was MGP, but they were very upfront with it. Yeah. Um, they were straight with everybody about what they were doing. They're, they're pulling old bun- punches, and they say that they're bona fide, which I always kind of thought was like a Southern gentleman and stuff, but when we looked it up, it means you are straightforward and you tell it like it is. Is it bona fide two words, or is it bona fide one word? I don't know. I can barely spell my own name, so <laughs> I'm not sure. But I would like to tell everybody what you're wearing today. Jim showed up at my house. He's not a hunter, but he's got a camo hat on. And he looks like Larry the Cable Guy today. <laughs> I think he said, get her done. Get her done. Get her done. <laughs> well, my camo hat actually says Gettysburg. Get, Gettysburg, Gettysburg. Not, not get her done. Not get her done. That's right. <laughs> so it's 92% rye, 5% smoked malt, and 3% malted barley. Okay. So the larger percentage, so altogether, 8% malted barley, but... Five percent of that is smoked. Smoked, yeah. So they didn't quite want to introduce all that smoke, so they just did a little bit of it. Five percent of it smoked. It sounds like they're doing it their their way. Um, this has been aged for four years, and it runs about fifty dollars MSRP. And you picked this up uh, at a, I'd say not a country store, but not an urban store. So we paid a little bit more for it, right? Got it at Go Big Blue Liquors. That. That store we that told story everybody about. That we talked yeah. about a few times, yeah. So, um, yeah, I saw this, and, you know, remembering the Notter Bourbon, which, honestly, were some well-selected barrels, very tasty stuff. Um, I thought, well, let's give these guys a try. This is a high-rye bourbon, no doubt about it. 92%? Yeah, it's not that Kentucky rye, as most people would call it, or southern rye. Yeah. Um, I... I think it's great. I think, uh, you know, they're stepping out of that box with something different and they're putting that smoke malt in there. Um, I, let's, let's, let's nose this thing and see what we think. Let's try some bona fide rye whiskey. What do you say? Let's do it. Now, this is four years old, you said? Four years. It's a little sweet on the nose, but it's... Uh, I am picking up just a little bit of youth for some reason, and I, w- I shouldn't be doing that with a four-year rye. You would think that would all be all be gone by now. See, I get a little bit of that charred oak in there with that that floralness that would you would expect from a rye. That not too much smoke on it though. A little bit. I I, I probably if if I didn't already know that it had smoked barley in it, I probably wouldn't say it. But I do get a little bit of smokiness, but I might attribute that just to the barrel, you know. I get uh, the floor I get on this is like when I'm cutting grass and there it's springtime or even in the middle of summer. And I've had those wildflowers out there and I might mow over some of those that Vivian loves so much. Mm-hmm. Um, cut them down. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get that nose on that, that floral nose. A little bit of spice in there. There's a little bit of spice and a little bit of fruit on the tail end with that spice, I think. But that's all That's all in the nose. We haven't tasted it yet, so I'm ready to dip in, Mike. Let's do it. That's really nice. Definitely has that smokiness to it. Mm-hmm. I it, can taste that. Definitely in the palate. Not so much on the nose, but more on the palate. 
still, I don't know that I would pick it up as a smoked grain. It's subtle enough where, you know, if you're somebody that is not, doesn't really like their, doesn't really like smoky malt type drinks, then I would say this won't bother you. I mean, it's not, it's not overly smoked. I'm getting a little bit of a creamy caramel on this. You know, it just kind of coats your mouth a little bit. It's a nice, well-rounded uh, mid-palate spice, I think. I'd call this a white pepper again. You know, we yeah. talked about that yeah, before, absolutely. what a white pepper is and for cooking. Um, it's not an overpowering. It's not like it's going to bite your tongue. It's just real light pepper. You got me a bag of that anise candy for my birthday, and I've been eating the piece here and there. <laughs> I wish I had a piece right now because I'm picking up a little bit of anise in this, and it's uh, it's nice. It's nice. Very mellow. Just just. Very subtle, but I'm getting it. Hmm. So it was your birthday. So, Jim, how old are you? I'm 31. 31. Yep. Man, you're a good looking 31 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm 57, Mike. 57. 57. Yep. Would that make you the oldest spirits podcaster? I would say um, it. I it could be. I mean, as far as I know. Hmm. It's called it's called experience. Experience. I've got experience. Mm. I'm experienced. Experienced. I like that. I, I bona fide experience. You got a you got a storehouse of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I'm the biggest guy in podcasting, but John Edwards from Dads might have me beat. He's a big boy. Like, he's a big man. Yeah. <laughs> John don't get me for that, but he's been working out too lately uh, a lot. So I saw that. maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see if he can bench Big Chief. Well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has a little bit of now. It's, it's set on my palate a little bit. I get a little bit more of a like raisin and cocoa mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, absolutely. So the raisin is. So I started talking about the anise, but I had that raisin on my mind the whole time because I'm definitely getting that. Almost um, not that. You ever eat raisin bran and you get them raisins out of there? They only put like three raisins in a box of raisin bran, right? Great for them, yep. But I don't know why they, they you know, you get a giant box from like Sam's Club and you dig in there and you'll just get three raisins in that entire box. But it wasn't that way when we were kids. There'd be about I remember them, raisin bran when we were kids. It was, you know, three flakes, one raisin probably, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheating us these days. Cheating us. Well, yeah. cheating the kids. I don't eat raisin bran anymore, so. I think this is awesome. Um, I can taste the oak in this still a little bit now. Um, I'm starting to get that little bit of Kentucky hug. Yeah, there's a bit more hug to this. I mean, we've had some rye lately. We've had some really good rye lately. This is a good rye. The hug on this is is definitely, it's it's high on the chart. Because it's pretty, it's a pretty daggone good hug on this, but the alcohol is not a lot up front. You think? Yeah, I don't think it's up front. I just not a whole lot of alcohol. It means a hundred proof, so it's not like it's a hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty. I think it's right where it needs to be for rye. I'm not a rye guy, so you know, I'm starting to like rye more. This for me would pair great with some pulled pork. Or even some of that hillbilly prosciutto, as Steve Coombs likes to call it, um, but some smoked ham or something. Yeah, I think that paired nice with that something smoked meat. Yeah, this is good. This is really good stuff. So I think uh, you know, and they didn't send us this bottle; we purchased it. Uh, but in any case, you know, we're just being fair on it, and I think that this is a good solid rye. It does have a little bit of youth. I get a little bit of youth on the nose, but on the palate, it seems good, solid four-year-old rye. I got to say, Matt and Mike, they're the brothers there. Um, straight up some great whiskey guys, if you're listening to this. I got to say, I just love your honesty of what you got going on. Even on their website, they make kind of, I won't say they're making fun of themselves, but they are just throwing it out there to be real. You know, they wrote a deal on their disclaimer. The brother's uh, grandfather did not distill moonshine for Al Capone. They don't have a secret family recipe, and they were not the first distillery since Prohibition to do this or that. 
you know, that speaks truth to power right there. And uh, I got to salute those guys for just saying what it is. You know, they just looked like two dudes that wanted to make some whiskey. Some new blood that just wanted to get in the whiskey business, right? Yeah. They, their bottles uh, that standard whiskey bottle, maybe kind of like the shape of an old Forester bottle yeah. a little bit. Not overly impressive. Um, it it, it kind of, to me, it kind of hides itself on the shelf a little bit, but I do like the colors on it. Red, white, and blue. I mean, how can you go wrong with red, red white, and blue, right? So I think that's a great pickup, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good sipper uh, for me. I would sip on this rye. I like the way that hug grabs me a little bit. So I might call this a fall rye. You know, we're almost to fall now. Not quite there. Still still in the grips of summer. But um, I would call that a fall rye. And it would be tasty to sit outside by a fire, a little chill in the, in the air, and sip on this. I think it would warm me up a little bit because that hug just stays with me. I'm just, we're almost there. Yeah. This one might even be pair good. I don't know if Steve would agree with me or not but this might pair perfectly with some big chief chili there you go no it would i think it would yeah i think it would pair good with chili it's not overly spicy it's it like you said it gives you that kentucky hug watching some football or sitting down by the fire i i think it's perfect um definitely a sipper mm-hmm. i don't know if i would buy it as a gift for someone uh just because it would step out of that realm of something totally different which it is um, but you know, I sit down and sip it. Yeah, this is good whiskey. I would share it with somebody. I would definitely use it. I would definitely use it as a mixer. I would sip on it myself. I would share it with a friend. Uh, probably not going to gift this bottle as well because I think it's just it doesn't just it doesn't just stand up and say I'm special. I need to be given away. But um, it's good. It's worth another buy, right? Yeah, I'll buy it again. I yeah. definitely will. I think it's a fair price. I think it's a good it's a good whiskey, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to have it on my bar. It's definitely not going to go to waste. It, even if, if it's at your house or my house, this wouldn't go to waste at all. Um, number one, because we're sharing our whiskey with not only our friends, but our bourbon roadies out there. That's right. Um, so if you're listening to this, you're a bourbon roadie, you see this on the shelf, it's worth a pickup. If you've got that $50 in your pocket, me and Jim always say that, we... Or different parts in our life right now, different places, different incomes. So we don't know what you have to spend. Um, Jim had $50 to spend. Other day. That day I, I was lucky enough to have $50. I usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, I usually have no cash on me at all, but I got lucky that day. Jim does not live in a river down by the or uh, <laughs> I live in a box down by the river. Jim doesn't live in a van down by the river is what I want to say. <laughs> no, I live in a box by the side of the road. <laughs> a box by the side of the road. Well, you do live pretty close to the road, so yeah. All right. So I think it's a great one, Jim. Thanks for bringing it over, man. Another great craft distillery. Um, our listeners, if you're listening out there, just go ahead and scroll back up and hit that subscribe button for us. And while you're doing that, you might as well give us a review, I, I think. So scroll back down. Scroll back down. And hopefully you want to push that five stars. Push four, three, two. And yeah, please don't push that one on us. Don't do that to us. Um, if you have to do it, you know, we'll take it. Um, but at least leave us a review and tell us what you thought so we can fix it in the future. That's right. We want to make it better, right? Kind of like these Blonde Brothers. We absolutely want to be upfront, honest with everybody. Um, so our listeners out there, if you don't know that we have a private Facebook group, it's called the Bourbon Roadies. A couple of great giveaways on there right now, Jim. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really happening. I mean, people have been kind of swarming to the group over the last few days, haven't they? Oh yeah. So our good give- people though. Oh, good gr- people swarming to the group. Great people. That's what we want. We don't want that rudeness in there. Um, we want everybody treat everyone fairly. From the beginner that gets excited about finding a bottle of Buffalo Trace, to the guy that's been doing it for fifty years. And he doesn't get excited about much. Right. Maybe a bottle of Pappies that he found. But, and that's it. So that's how our group is. Two great giveaways right now. We have a bottle of Stack Junior. Big Cheese photo bomb giveaway. But Adams is giving away a bottle of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C119. So two big bottles. I'm giving away batch 
14 and some samples of batch 13 and batch 12. So I think those are two great giveaways. Not a whole lot you got to do for those. Leave some reviews, send old Big Chief some photos, help me out while I'm on vacation because I'm taking Vivian down to Florida because we were supposed to be in Mexico. But um, COVID and all that mess has messed our vacations up, Jim. Yeah. And if you're not handy with a camera and you just like to look at pictures, make sure you follow us on Instagram at thebourbonroad.com. You can find us on Facebook at thebourbonroad.com, Twitter at thebourbonroad.com. We also have a website called thebourbonroad.com. Get in the picture here, thebourbonroad.com. Yeah, thebourbonroad.com, yeah. <laughs> um, we, uh, we put all of our episodes up on the website. We've got some blogs up there uh, on each and every episode. Hopefully, we'll have some reviews pretty soon on there, and you can buy some of our swag. Um, you know, we definitely would love to see you in the roadies though. The roadies is a great group of people, private Facebook group, request to join three questions, come in and just have a great time. Yeah. So you can find me at one big chief on Instagram and I'm Jay Shannon 63 and we will see you down the bourbon road. <laughs>